Hello and welcome to the Business Today show. I'm Udayan Mukherjee. For the last many years, India is trying to rediscover itself as a global manufacturing destination. And one sector which could benefit enormously from this drive if it were to come about is the textile sector, which could potentially employ millions more people. But success on this front has been quite mixed. In fact, many other Asian economies like Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Vietnam, and of course China have taken much bigger strides in the textile space globally. But if in this second coming India were to get its act right, one company which could really benefit is the decades old Ahmedabad based corporation of Arvind. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome on the Business Today show Sanjay Lalbhai, Chairman and Managing Director of Arvind. Um, Sanjay, it's uh, great to see you again and uh, good to have you on the show after a long time. Thanks for having me. Well, you know, from your career, uh, I mean, if I look at how it's panned out over the last many decades, you seem like someone with that, the entrepreneurial itch inside you. But, you know, the, the need to do something new, different things. But the fact that you were born within the Arvind fold, has it been some kind of a, uh, has it curbed the entrepreneurial drive in you, you would say, or, or reigned in the full uh, reign of exploration that you might have otherwise done? I don't think so, because I started my career with then uh, being uh, only head of purchase department in this company. And uh, I had the freedom at that that time to start number of new initiatives. So I was a serial entrepreneur at that, uh, entrepreneur at that time. So I don't think I've been curbed by being associated with Arvind at all. But this, this entrepreneurial drive, I mean, to do or try out mm -hmm. different kind of things, would you say it has been an asset for you or has it sometimes been a distraction? Uh, could take it either way, but um, I think in a growing economy where, uh, I mean, there is a huge landscape where you can grow. I mean, those kind of uh, opportunities come only once in a lifetime because it's all about the kind of growth curve of the of that that particular economy. So I think uh, if you've seen that most of the uh, entrepreneurs have started with something, but then they have multiple kind of uh, opportunities they have looked at. So I think I am no exception. And Arvind too seems to be in a kind of a transition over the last many years. It's, I mean, denim was the mainstay at some point, but now it seems like it will become a much bigger uh, branded apparel player going forward. And of course, we are foraying into other things like uh, technical textiles. Uh, yeah, well, where do you think you are in the journey of Arvind actually uh, really fulfilling its true potential as a textiles giant? Well, then I think it's a continuous journey. Um, I think you know that, you know, a couple of years back before COVID, we did uh, spin off all the businesses separately. So the brand's business is housed in Arvind Brands Limited. Arvind's uh, 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 and uh, the real estate has been housed in Arvind Smart Spaces Limited. And we have an engineering company called Anu, which was uh, a subsidiary of Arvind, which has been spun off. And uh, Arvind Limited is the textile uh, uh, part of the entire uh, business now. So we have four listed companies. Uh, all, of, all of them are growing very well. And we have quite a few growth um, uh, uh, growth opportunities within this portfolio. And this transition is not just in terms of restructuring of the companies or uh, realignment of product lines. It's also that, you know, after many, many decades, it seems like sooner or later there will be a change of guard. I mean, you would be handing over the business to your two sons, Puneet and Kulin. Uh, where is that uh, now? Because they have been entrenched in the fold for some time now. Uh, but how do you see this transition playing out over the next few years? Oh, the transition has already taken place. You know, I have handed over the reins of management to both of them. So, Pulini is running uh, Arvind's Fashion Limited and uh, Arvind Smart Spaces. 
and Puneet is running Arvind Limited and Anu. So very clearly between the two of them, they are looking at all the four listed companies. What's your role in the company now? As a chairman, the, I get involved with strategy. I am mentoring a lot. Um, I keep on doing innovation, so looking at uh, technology and innovation. And then my passion is I am building one of the unique Indigo Museum, uh, which en encompasses uh, a very, very large kind of um, uh, product category. So I, I embrace uh, uh, artists, sculptors, um, artisans, um, a whole, whole uh, lot of creative people have possibility of expressing themselves in this new initiative, which I'm personally heading. So I'm doing what is appropriate for my age, mm. uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm in a startup mode. All right. But let me talk a little bit about Arvind because, you know, uh, I mean, sure. you actually have, are the one who's built the company out over the last many decades. Uh, and at some point, it looked like you were getting into a, launching a lot of brands. But that seems to have changed over the last few years with you sharpening your focus in a few key brands and making them bigger. Uh, I mean, for example, US Polo is a very large brand for you now. But, but do you think that this is going to be the thrust of Arvind going forward, that you actually try and make many thousand crore plus brands and drive the growth through them uh, rather than get into multiple, uh, a dozen or a couple of dozen brands? So what happened was that um, we thought that we will create a very large portfolio of brands in different price points. So as you are aware, we had almost a portfolio of uh, 15 brands. But uh, what we realized is that we are losing focus and we are losing the, the kind of uh, allocation of capital and time to very large opportunities. So what we have intentionally done over the years in the last couple of years post COVID is that we've completely vacated all those opportunities where um, I think it would have taken a couple of years uh, to scale them and completely focused on our uh, strong brands and have become the best in class in those segments. So let's say Tommy and Calvin Klein, Brit to Luxury, uh, they've grown dramatically, I think, um, compared to industry, they would be amongst the highest uh, Rossi, uh, EBITDA kind of performing brands uh, with very decent growth um, and uh, considered to be uh, amongst the top brands in that segment. Um, as far as US Polo is concerned, it has become the largest casual brand and now it has gone beyond the being called a casual brand, it's gone into various other subcategories and it's now growing like a lifestyle brand uh, very aggressively so it will become a uh, our major growth engine um, post covid you know we were struggling with uh, arrow because of the formal wear had really taken a nose dive um, and i think our own uh, thrust as far as arrow is concerned because we had a very long tail of brands so we lost out somewhere, but we have completely turned mm. it around. Riddhik Roshan is our brand ambassador, completely new brand identity. Uh, the VM and the look and feel of the stores is is very, very good. It's We have started catering to the younger crowd and uh, we are in a single digit EBITDA now. And very soon, I think we will get into the double digit EBITDA as far as Arrow is concerned. So it's been completely rejigged re-energized brand as far as Arrow is concerned. And Flying Machine, as you know, was mainly an um, online platform. We have completely, again, rejigged that. We are now doing an omni strategy. So we are opening many stores, physical stores, and all our stores are omni. So, I mean, every store is, a, is, is like a warehouse from where we can ship uh, in real time anything which is required. Um, so, uh, again, a new identity as far as flying machine is concerned. We have completely, uh, also the stores have been uh, uh, reimagined 
and a very young and um, uh, again uh, uh, aggressive brand we are we are building out it has turned the corner it is profitable but the ebitas have a long way to go so if you really look at a portfolio of these five brands i think it is it has humongous opportunity and as i was telling you that in us polo uh, we have done a brand extension in uh, in shoes so the sneakers is the largest uh, is number one sneaker brand online on the online platform uh, us polo with a turnover of 200 crores and growing at around 50 60% or sometimes 100% if the things are going well uh, we have gone into undergarments we have gone into children's um, uh, garments uh, children's line as far as us polo is concerned so all these brands are going for their national brand extensions and we believe that there is a long and and very very good pathway as far as these brands because they are all iconic brands well uh, uh, recognized in this country and um, with very tight management very with complete focus and um, completely rigid strategy of positioning them to the right customer right, right age group i think we are very buoyant about our uh, portfolio we have doubled our sales in the arvin fashion limited afl uh once it's been separated uh, uh we have doubled it in the last two years we are growing at a very good clip uh we are rosi is going up all the time uh hmm. three of our brands are in double digit profits uh two of our brands would get it, get there so i think we are very very buoyant about uh, our brand's business right so just to take off uh, from the mentions that you the brands that you mentioned right now by sanjay by when do you think mm-hmm. uh, tommy and calvin klein would get into the 1000 crore bracket because us polo is almost nudging a 2000 crore uh, kind of a bracket uh, but when do you think tommy right. and ck will get into that kind of size see as you know it is rich to luxury we have to be very specific as to where we open these shops um, both put together are already 1000 crores and i i would say that they are growing at 10 to 15% again to start new licenses or new categories here we have uh, it's a joint venture partnership with pvh so we have to as a board agree on on the growth kind of trigger and uh, but it is growing very very uh, handsomely and uh, i personally feel that the the luxury or rich to luxury is doing extremely well i think even the b and c category towns are becoming aspirational and so i believe that um, with a little favorable kind of uh, macro economic situation we should be doing extremely well when would we hit it i think as you know uh, udayan that you know the world is looking so uncertain <laughs> we have headwinds but we continue doing well i mean uh, so fingers crossed and growing mm-hmm. at a good clip but we are at 1000 crores so when you are saying le- how, when will you be 2000 crores right. it's it's going to be a couple of years how do you see arvind compared to some of your peers like a raymond or an aditya birla fashion uh, i mean you you're not doing exactly the same thing but your models are not dissimilar uh, how do you uh, see the advantages and disadvantages relative to some of your large peers you know then i mean every all these companies you talked about are great companies with unique strengths i think uh, uh, as kumar birla is trying to make it into a very large kind of play he's acquired so many brands he's exactly gone the other way we have curtailed our portfolio he's extended his portfolio he has signed up so many iconic designers from india he's signed up with international uh, brands he's got a retail format uh, so he's he's really expanding the kind of portfolio so he's playing a very different uh, different kind of game uh, as far as raymond is concerned i think uh, the occasion wear and the ceremonial uh, space i think they are almost like a monopoly like they are the xerox of the ceremonial space and the ceremonial space is doing pretty well in india i think people do spend for marriages and occasions 
So they are in a sweet spot. I mean, again, Raymond has a whole portfolio very similar to ours. Like we have se separated all these businesses, but they have an identical portfolio sitting within Raymond. So they have an engineering firm. We have an engineering firm. They have a real estate uh, firm. We have a real estate firm. They have a brand's portfolio. We have a brand's portfolio. They are into from fiber to garment and servicing customers. So we also are in that. But they have a much larger B2C presence and we are more a B2B company with, of course, Arvin being the third most recognized brand after Raymond's and Sierra in the B2C space. So we are opening the Arvin uh, 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 shops um, and uh, we are selling fabrics and RMG under the brand Arvin. So that is also growing pretty fast. Our B2C business is almost 1,000 crores now and quite profitable. Where does all this leave the original business, uh, Sanjay, Denim? That's where it all started. But now, you know, it seems like it is not the, no longer for a long time the mainstay of Arvind. Is it yesterday's story for you? See, the shirting and the, uh, the gabardine, the, the casual wear and the formal wear space, other than Denim, has become the largest business in Arvind today. Because... Uh, it's, it's, it's more complicated. There are too many SKUs. You require very small um, uh, kind of um, uh, yardages to service the customer. So it's, it's a difficult business and Arvind has perfected it over the years. So that is the fastest growing business in our fabric business. The knits business, we are going vertical and we are becoming a vertical player in the niche, so we will give a complete final garment to Gap, Levi's and various brands we are dealing with. As far as denim is concerned, you are right that there is overcrowding in the Indian market. There are too many players and what has happened is that only the value and then the, the bid to luxury is, is flourishing. The mid brands, the mid price brands have really almost vanished. So Old Navy does well, Gap is under pressure. So, so I think we are rejigging the entire strategy. In textiles, I think the most important thing for Arvind is there are two strategies as far as Arvind Limited is concerned, the fabric business is concerned. We are going vertical. So we will not sell fabrics, we will sell the final garment to the end consumer and we will become more strategic to him because we are giving him end-to-end -end solution and he has to only come to us. He doesn't have to really coordinate the fabrics going to Bangladesh, getting converted into garments and then getting shipped to all the retail outlets which a brand has. So one growth area and where capital is going is in verticalization. In denim also, we are verticalizing. Uh, the real money is in, in and differentiation happens when you wash a pair of jeans because that is where the skills are required. And that's where the differentiation happens. So Arvind is going vertical and that's a very, very profitable business. And we have age old relations and we believe that that will be a growth story. Um, to answer your question, the old business is not at all old. We have brought in the newest technologies there. We, have, we are the first company in India to go into PK polos, round necks and jeggings in Indigo. So we are the only people other than China to offer PK Polo, uh, round necks printed uh, and jeggings in Indigo. We have newer technologies like uh, seamless technology, warp knitting. So these are the newer technologies which can just start from yarn and give you a final garment. So we are building all capabilities to service just in time. The online space which requires very large width, they launch a lot of uh, designs and the designs which work, they want a replenishment in a week's time and not in six months time. So Arvind is preparing a whole new strategy to service the new age uh, uh, business of online, which is instantaneous gratification, very small number of uh, units per design, but very fast replenishment. So, I think we are doing quite a few things in uh, denim, going vertical in our traditional denim business, which is pair of jeans. 
but we are supplementing it with uh, uh, the the shirt shirts business which is shamre shirts and we are also giving jeggings pk polo round necks and all that so we have a, now one of the most comprehensive kind of right. offering in denim and we believe that these are enough growth engines to ensure that denim keeps on growing and at a fair clip and remains profitable and we re retain the pricing power which we have enjoyed over the years right but finally sanjay your growth will be also tied to the sector of the growth of the textile sector in india and there i come back to the original mm -hmm. starting point which is india's performance compared to some of the other uh, neighboring countries like bangladesh sri lanka even vietnam but why have they done so much better in that that space compared to us and can we get it right this time round absolutely so i think it's a very valid question um i think uh, historically if you see that arvind uh, i mean india has developed as a fabric destination and not garmenting garmenting is the one which connects it to the customer so all the kind of customer connects are with bangladesh or vietnam or turkey or sri lanka or pakistan and of course china india has lost out on garmenting because of the labor laws and the kind of problems we had again as you would know that we do not have any kind of free trade agreements the way bangladesh or sri lanka or uh, pakistan has turkey has a strategic advantage of being very close to european countries so they can turn around their goods uh, in a day or two or in a week's time so all these countries have had great advantage and they have all grown in garmenting whilst india has grown in fabrics because of one ir issues and labor issues now they have been they have been uh, addressed because we have now fixed term contracts as a law and um, we can now have lot of workers without having the worry of uh retrenchment compensation so that problem has been solved we are in the process of signing free trade agreements as you would know with uk and there is a great possibility that we will also sign it with europe in the coming uh, one year uh the other major thing is that government has realized that if we want to become the largest textile player then there are two problems india has only grown in uh, cotton and not in man made fabrics man made fabrics is 60% of the total textile business where china and taiwan and korea predominantly uh, have the market share so india has to make a foray into uh, man made fabrics so government has realized this and they have given a pro uh, um, production linked incentive scheme to do the entire value chain of starting with filament and giving a final garment to likes of uh, nike and adidas and lululemon and all the athleisure and sports uh, customers so arvin has begun uh, for a we have started we are we, we are the first people to put up the entire uh, 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 vertical line starting from filament all the way to garments and uh, we are also growing athleisure and sportswear brands with all these brands like us polo calvin klein uh, 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 tommy hill figure so i think to address your uh, question two problems were that we don't have scale in garmenting government has also given um, the uh, prime minister uh, uh, textile paths have been announced pli has been announced so both the problems and the third problem which was there is free trade agreement so now we could have scale the labor issues have been addressed so once we have scale in garmenting and we become a one stop shop and we start operating in both cotton as well as uh, man made fabrics i think india should not look back and we need companies to really get scale right. and uh, become large so i would say that uh, for the first time government industry uh, has sat down together realized as to why we are not uh, becoming the biggest player in this china plus 
uh, one strategy is playing out in many many product categories and one is realize that if we want to create blue collar jobs then this is one of the best places so i think it is all all coming together well i wish you luck with that then sanjay and uh, thank you very much for your time it's a pleasure talking to you today and good to see you after a long time thank you very much thank you thank you udan great to connect with you if you like the video do like comment share and subscribe